Blue Gem Media is a platform where the word of God is being preached undiluted. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21 says, Since God in his wisdom sought to hear that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. For more inquiry, you can send an email to lovesamsonbrace at yahoo.com. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The Lord is good all the time. Let us pray. Who oh, is like unto thee? Oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh Lord, among the gods, who is like thee? Glory. And fearful in praises, doing wonders, hallelujah. Eternal Rock of Ages, I want to say thank you. I want to say a special thank you for bringing me to this platform again to share the word of the Lord. I appreciate your holy name because your word is new every day is new every morning thank you for inspiration holy spirit i thank you for being the greatest teacher lord be thou exalted in jesus name lord as we look into your word we ask that you bring the understanding of your word to us in the mighty name of jesus everyone that we have an opportunity to listen to this video lord i pray that you will open their heart in the name of jesus you walk upon their mind and you will help all of us to understand the purpose of this teaching in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of it, Father, please take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. By the special grace of God today, we'll be talking about a topic called God is intentional about you. God is intentional about your background. God is intentional about your foundation. God is intentional about everything that concerns you. And we'll be taking our text from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. This is the beginning of creation. Hallelujah. God wanted to create something. He created the heavens and the earth. Now, the story between him and his creation is just like when you have a, a potter and you have a clay. A potter has a picture in mind of, of what he wants to make. A potter picks the clay and at its raw form, there are stones in it, there are pebbles in it, there are sticks in it, there are different stuffs in it. And the potter actually puts the clay through a process that refines the clay. And by the time the clay is refined, it's in a position where he can work properly with it so that he can make whatever he has in mind. The potter might have the mind of making a mug or making a flower verse or making a dish. It depends on what he has in mind. Then it begins the process of making it. Hallelujah. So also God had something in mind. He was intentional about the creation of the heaven and earth. It wasn't a mistake. The earth did not just come as a form of a mistake. No, God was intentional. God created the heaven and the earth and he saw that the earth was formless. He saw that there was chaos everywhere. There was no gravity. Everything was just flying about. There was darkness. Everything was mixed together. And God said, 
let there be light. Hallelujah. That was the first thing he created. He called for the light. Because when there is light, there is speed. When there is light, there is life. When there is light, you know, there is motivation. When there is light, you will want to, you know, walk because everywhere is bright. Hallelujah. So God called for the light so that it would be very easy for him to create other things. So the moment he created the light, he started creating waters, he separated the waters from the waters, he created the firmament, you know. He called for a lot of things. And after he had created all he needed to create, he created man also. Man was the last thing he created. He created man. And in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31, Genesis chapter 1 verse 31, God saw that everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. God saw everything he created. God was intentional. He didn't have to call the angels. He didn't have to call the elders and say, come and see what I've created. Do you think man looks like man? Because the elders don't have the picture of what he wanted to create. He is the only one that has the picture of what he wanted to create. He's the one that knows what he actually wanted to create. So when he created it, he looked at everything, including man, including beast, including the firmament. He looked at everything and he said, behold, it is very good. That means what he is seeing looks exactly like the picture of what he had in mind to create. So you are an intentional creation of God. Everything around you is intentional. There was no mistake about what you look like. There's no mistake about whether your nose is long or your lips are big or there is no mistake about that. God is intentional about everything that he created, including you. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 revelations chapter 4 verse 11 it says thou art worthy o lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created god is intentional about everything he had created and the purpose at which he had created everything including you is for his pleasure the reason why he has created the firmament is for his pleasure. The reason why he has created you so that he can dominate everything around you is for his pleasure. God created everything for his pleasure. And it pleased him to show his glory through some things. Hallelujah. For example, it pleased God to show forth his glory through that man that was born blind. Remember the story in the book of John chapter 9 about this man that Jesus Christ saw. This man was born without a high socket. This man was born blind. Hallelujah. And when the disciples saw him, because they know that the wages of sin is death. They know that when a man commits sin, the next thing that happens is sickness. Because sickness leads to death. So they asked Jesus Christ and said, who committed sin? This man was born without an eyesight. He didn't even have an eye socket. Was it the mother? Was it the father? Is it a generational sin? What happened that this man was born blind? And Jesus Christ said, mm, don't get it wrong. This situation is not as a result of somebody committing sin or the other. But this situation is because God wants to show forth his glory through this man. God wants to show everybody around that if he was the one that created you originally, he can still create a missing part in your body. Hallelujah. If he was the one that created you, which he was the one that created you originally, if any part of your body is missing, he can still replace it. So what did Jesus Christ do? He made a spittle on the ground and he anointed the man's eyes and he told him to go and wash and he came back saying, because God has created that situation for his pleasure. He has created that situation so that all glory will be returned back to him. What about the story of Lazarus? In the book of John chapter 11, Lazarus was sick. Lazarus was a friend of God. Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, their family members, 
they were the friend of Jesus. And when Lazarus was sick, and information was sent to Jesus that your friend Lazarus is sick, come and pray for him so that he can be healed. Jesus Christ knew that Lazarus was sick. And Jesus Christ told his disciples in verse 4, John 11 verse 4, when Jesus had that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Hallelujah. So God allowed that situation to happen. He allowed Lazarus to fall sick. Jesus Christ did not go there. Even when Lazarus died, Jesus Christ knew that Lazarus died. He still did not go there until when it was on the fourth day. That was when Jesus Christ showed up. At that point, Lazarus was buried already. Because he died first day, second day, third day. All up, up were lost. At that point, it will have started decaying. So when Jesus Christ got there, the sisters of Lazarus were like, Jesus, if you had come earlier, my brother wouldn't have died. Maybe you will have saved the situation. Maybe you will have helped. Now Lazarus is dead and is buried already. And Jesus Christ said, where did you lay him? And he took, he took them there. They took him there and he called Lazarus forth. Do you know that that singular incident made a lot of people around that sin to believe in Jesus? It made a lot of people around that sin have a stronger faith in the Lord. So God allows some situations to happen in your life for his pleasure. He allows some situations to happen in your life so that he can receive the glory. He allows some situations to happen in your life so that people that witness the manifestation of God in that situation, we have a stronger belief than ever before in the Lord. I know what happened. Even the Pharisees and uh, um, the priests, the chief priests, all of them, they were looking for a way to kill Lazarus because they said, as long as this man is still alive, people will be remembering that once he was dead and Jesus Christ brought him back to life. And a lot of people will give their life to him or they will follow Jesus. So they were looking for a way to kill him so that they can silence that testimony. I pray for you that great thing that God has done in your life. That wonderful thing, that beautiful thing, that great testimony that is making you smile and is making you laugh. And the devil is looking for how to snatch that testimony away from you. In the name that is above every other name, God will silence them over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. God has done that miracle for you. It is permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. So God allows situations to happen for his pleasure. He allows situations to happen for the manifestation of his glory. Hallelujah. He shows up through a situation. He shows up through an impossible situation so that people around you will know that there is a God that rules in the affairs of men. Hallelujah. God created all things and for his pleasure, he has created them, including the placement and the promotion of men. Some people think that, oh, when I go to school and, you know, I read my books very well and I come out with great grades. We have good grades. We have fair grades. We have great grades. You know, those are the first class. Those are the, and I come out with that grade. Automatically, I can become the president of my country. It doesn't work like that. Why? Because the Bible says in Psalms chapter 75, verse 6 to 7 psalms chapter 75 verse 6 to 7 it said for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south but god is the judge he put it down one and set it up another most of the time those people that you think are brilliant most people that you think are smart especially those ones that don't know the lord they don't amount to anything anyone that put his trust in his own wisdom, you put your trust in your own achievements. And you think because of that, you are supposed to be at the top. It's not usually like that. There is a God that rules in the affairs of man. This God can decide to take a poor man from the dust. And he will just create a situation that will make that man sit with princes. He will create a problem that will make that uh, uneducated person. It will just make him to be able to solve it and it leads him directly to the palace. Hallelujah. God is the one that raised up 
a man is the one that pulls down another. Promotion does not come from anybody. Stop putting your trust in that uncle. Stop putting your trust in that president. Stop putting your trust in that man. Because promotion does not come from any man. Promotion comes from God. Hallelujah. Promotion comes from him and him alone. There's a story of a successful king named Nebuchadnezzar. In the book of Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. This king grew very strong. This king grew very powerful. Hallelujah. In his time, he had influence. He was very strong and powerful. And one day, he looked across the city and he said, look at this great city of Babylon. He said, by my own might, by my own power, I have built this beautiful city as my royal residence to display my majestic splendor. This man did not know that a man cannot receive anything except it's been given to him from above. This man does not know that everything he has and he has achieved is not by his own power. It's not by his strength. It is because heaven has released it from him. John chapter 3 verse 27. John chapter 3 verse 27. It says a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above. So while these words of pride was coming out from the mouth of this king, a voice came down from heaven and said, O oh, king, Nebuchadnezzar, this message is for you. You are no longer ruler of this kingdom. You will be driven from human society. You will live in the field with the wild animals and you will eat grass like a cow. Seven years, seven period of time will pass while you live this way until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdom of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. There is a God that rules in the affairs of man. That God can humble the proud. That God can bring to naught that man that thinks it is by my power that I've achieved this. Whatever you think you have achieved in your life, give, the, give glory to God. Don't think it is by your wisdom. Don't think it is by your strength. Because when he checks your heart and he sees that you are feeling that way, it can bring you down. The same hour, the judgment was fulfilled and Nebuchadnezzar was driven from heaven, from human society, sorry. He hates grass like a cow and he was drenched with the dew of heaven. He lived this way until his hair was as long as eagle's feathers and eagle's feathers and his nails were like bird's claw. After this time had passed, he, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up to heaven. His sanity returned unto him, and he praised and worshipped the Most High and honored the one who lives forever. His rule is everlasting, and his kingdom is eternal. You don't want to wait until God turns you to an animal. This man, do you know that Nebuchadnezzar, God was so gracious to him because he saw it in a dream already. God showed him in a dream, Daniel interpreted the dream, and still he did not learn until God made it to happen to him. He became an animal. He lived in the, in the bush for seven years. Rain fell on him, sun shined on him, dew fell on him, everything fell on him. His nails were long, his hairs were long. In short, he, was, he looked like an animal. Hallelujah. Until he was able to say, and admit that there is a God that rules in the affairs of men. God intentionally, God intentionally permitted that situation so that he will know that there is a God that rules in the affairs of men. Hallelujah. God knows the thought of your heart even before you say it. He knows what you're thinking in your heart. Even though you have not said it out, it's not hidden from God. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. The Lord's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. Get, the Lord knows the thought of your heart. The Lord knows, even before you say it, He knows the thought of your heart. Before you started that church, He knows why you started it. 
before you married that man, he knew whether you married him because you loved him or because you wanted to take advantage of him. Before you marry that woman, he knows the thought of every man's heart and he judges the thought of a man's heart. Be careful what you think because while you are yet thinking it, God is weighing your thought. While you are yet thinking it, God is judging your thought already. So you have to be very careful about what you think. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 15. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 15. He says, How are you falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther side of the north. I will ascend above the height of the cloud. I will be like the most high. And that was the thought in Lucifer's heart. Instead, you will be brought down to the place of the dead, down to its lowest depth. Lucifer was thinking. The devil was thinking because God has created him so beautifully. The Bible calls him the son of the morning. Another version calls him the morning star. God created him with beautiful things. He created him with the finest of raw material. You know, he built music inside of him. You know, he, Lucifer is very beautiful. God created him very well. And the point came that he thought that he could raise his throne higher than God. He had not even said it. He had not even started executing it. He had not even called the meeting concerning his thoughts. He was just thinking about it in his heart. He said he was going to bring his throne higher than God. He said he was going to sit at the farthest part of the north. You know, he was thinking about it and God spotted his thought and God brought him down. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 verse 12, Revelation chapter 12 verse 12, it said, Woe to the inhabitant of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. He knows that he's condemned already. He knows the punishment for his own sin. He is an angel. He doesn't have time for it. He doesn't have the opportunity of repentance like human beings have. He has been judged already ever since he had a proud heart. Ever since he thought in his heart to raise his throne above the throne of God. God brought him down to the lowest speed. Be mindful of what you think about. Because God knows it while you are thinking about it. God is judging it already. You don't want him to turn you to an animal. You don't even want him to bring you down. So be mindful, be careful of the thought of your heart. Because there is a God that is intentional. There is a God that rules in the affairs of men. God is intentional about you. And the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He said, I alone know the plan I have for you. Plan to bring you prosperity and not to disaster. Plan to bring about the future you hope for. There's a future you are hoping for. There's a plan and a thought in your heart. God wants to bring that plan to pass. God has a great plan for you. He wants to prosper you. But someone could be saying someone that is listening to me at this moment could be saying that if god has a good plan for my life why is calamity coming my way if god has a great plan for my life why is life so unfair to me if god has a plan for my life why did i have to pass through all of these troubles if god has a plan for my life why am i in need if god has a plan for my life why am I so unfortunate? I'm going to list some reasons why you might be passing through what you're passing through. Whatever you're passing through does not rule out the fact that God has a great plan for your life. It does not rule out the fact that God's thoughts towards you, they are thought of good. You might be passing through what you're passing through. Maybe because God is boasting about you to the devil. Hallelujah. Maybe God is vouching for you. Maybe God is saying that this girl will never deny me like he did about Job. The Bible says in Job chapter 1, 
verse 6 to 8. Job chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. One day, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with them. Where have you come from? Said the Lord to Satan. And Satan said, from roaming through the head and walking back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one on earth like him. A man who is blameless and upright, who fears God and shuns evil. Satan was just on his own. There was a meeting. God was having a meeting with his children. And Satan came. And God was the one that started the conversation. It was not even the devil that spotted Job. God was the one that started. He said, have you, have you seen my servant Job? Have you checked him out? Have you seen that this man will not deny me? Have you seen that this man is upright? And the devil said, oh, why will you not be upright when you have given him everything? Why will you not be upright when you have prospered him? Why will you not be upright when everything he asks you, you give unto him? And the devil said, just allow me to take all of those things that he is rejoicing him. Let me take all of those things that is making his heart merry. Let me take all of those things from him and see if he will not cause you to your face. And God permitted him. God granted him. That was when the trouble of Job started. And you know, the devil took his children, took his flocks, took every, his farmland, everything he had. The devil took everything in one day. And you know, God still told the devil and said, did you see? He, has not, he did not even deny me. He will not deny me. Job is an upright person. God was still using Job to boast. Hallelujah. And the devil said that it's because he has good health. Let me touch his body. Let, him, let me touch his health and see if it will not cause it to your face. God said you can touch his body, but don't touch his soul. You must not take his life. And you know, Job was sick. His body was with a lot of pain and so and still job did not deny god and you know what god did the bible says that the hand of job was better than its beginning because god restored everything that job had ever lost maybe you are going through what you are going through because god knows that you will not deny him don't disappoint god maybe you are going through what you are going through because god knows that you are his true child maybe the devil knows that you are, your, your faith is too strong in God and is looking for how to shake it. Don't worry. God is going to push through for you in the name of Jesus. You might be going through what you are going through. Maybe because God is training you. The Bible says in Psalms 144 verse 1. Psalm 144 verse 1. Say, praise the Lord who is my rock. He trains my hand for war. And gives my finger the skills for battle. The process of training is not an easy process. When you are being trained for war, you are being trained. It is not a process of uh, smiling. The process of war is a the process of when you are being trained for war is a tedious process. Maybe God is teaching your fingers to fight. Maybe God is training your faith. Maybe God is training your hand for war. That might make it look like life is unbearable for you. That might make it look like, oh, life is so, so unfair to you. But you know what? Just focus. Focus on the Lord. Learn everything he needs you to learn. Then you become a better Christian. Then you become a warrior. Then tomorrow you can stand up for others. You can train others. You can help others. Through you, God can rescue men and women from the jaws of hell and from the jaws of death. You might be passing through what you're passing through, maybe because God is hiding you. God might decide to hide you because he knows that the enemies that are where you are, it's possible they could be stronger than you and they can kill you and kill the vision he has for you. They could kill you and kill the plan that he has for you. So God might decide to hide you. Has God eaten anybody before? Yes. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 2, verse 19 to 20. Matthew chapter 2, verse 19 to 20. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go into the la land of Israel. For they had dead who sought the young child's life. When Jesus was born, Herod was seeking to kill him. 
because he knew there was another king. He knew that his, the star has shown, and he knew that this is a threat to his own rulership. This is a threat to his own kingdom. And he sent out people, soldiers, to kill him. When they didn't see him, he said they should kill all the children between the age of three and below. He said they should kill all of them. And there was crying and wailing. And you know, before that time, God told Joseph and Mary, God appeared to Joseph in a dream. He said, take the mother and the child and run. So at times, God might allow you to run so that your enemies will not kill you. God might decide to, to hide you because he knows that if he exposes you at that time, they will overcome you. So life might look so unbearable. It might look like you are living in the remote area. It might look like you are living in a place where nobody is seeing you. God is hiding you and is straining your hand to walk. When the time comes, it will show you forth to the world. Hallelujah. Life might become, might seem like it's unbearable. Maybe because God is using you to prepare your children or is using you as an example to strengthen others. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 14, Philippians chapter 1 verse 14, and because of my imprisonment, it is Paul that is talking here. Many of the Christians here seems to have lost their fear of chains. Somehow, my patience has encouraged them and they have become more and more bold in telling others about Christ. So the imprisonment of Paul for the sake of the gospel actually strengthened other people to have confidence in God, to have confidence in holding on to their faith. So there are times that God might allow you to go through some things to strengthen other people. If that pastor could go through that and did not deny God, I would never deny him. God might allow you to be passing through what you are passing through because he knows that people are watching you. God might allow you to be passing through what you are passing through because he knows that through your passing through it, other people's faith will be strengthened. Paul passed through a lot. You know, he suffered for the sake of the gospel. And because of that, a lot of the disciples' heart were strengthened. A lot of people's faith were also strengthened because of what he passed through. So if he now said, God, I don't want to pass through all of that. I'm not a fool. I don't want to do that. Means all the people that were supposed to be strengthened because of what he went through would not be strengthened. God knows the way he works things out. He's intentional about it. He might want you to go through it so that other people seeing you go through it and you're not denying God will also be strengthened. Hallelujah. You might be going through what you are going through, maybe because you are growing a strong root. When a tree is planted, and tree, the tree is supposed to be a very big tree, and the first year, second year, you might not even see the tree. The tree will just be as short as possible. The tree will just be there. We look like, oh, is this tree just, just not growing? The tree is actually growing, but it's growing its roots down to the ground. Trees like that that spend years and time growing their roots, the moment they spring up, nothing can bring them down again. But there are some plants, the first month that you grow them, that's the first month they grow their leaves, and they don't grow long. So God might be using that period in your life, that period that you think nobody is noticing you, that period that you think that nobody is appreciating you, that period that which I, you think that nobody is even seeing what you're doing. God might be using that period to grow your roots. Hallelujah. Like Peter, maybe what you are going through is your calling. You might be going through some things. And you're like, why is life so hard on me than other people? Mm -hmm. God might be allowing you to go through that because of your calling. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. It says, and I say also unto thee, that thou had Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock I will build my church. If God is going to build this church upon your life, if God is going to use you for end time revival, if God is going to use you to liberate the sick, liberate the people in bondage, the people in chains, if God is going to, he has a high on you, and he said, upon you, I will build my church. 
and the gate of hell will not prevail. For the Bible to say that the gate of hell will not prevail, that means the gate of hell will fight. And the process of the gate of hell fighting you, that process might not be a good process. That process at which the gate of hell is fighting you, that process might not be a laughing process. That process at which the gate of hell is trying to weaken you, that process will not be a great process. But the great thing is the Bible says, and the gate of hell will not prevail against you. The gate of hell will not prevail against the church. It might look like the church is shaking. It might look like everything is upside down. But the Bible says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. God might be allowing whatever that is going on in your life. God might be permitting that incident to happen in your life. Maybe because he wants to reach out to a lost soul. God might intentionally allow those things to be going on in your life. Because he wants to reach out to someone. Because he has a mind for someone. Because his heartbeat is beating about someone. And he wants to use your situation. That your situation that you are saying is unfriendly. That your situation that you are saying that is not a good situation. He might want to use that situation to reach out to the lost. How do I mean? Remember the book of remember the uh, story of Naaman in the book of Second Kings chapter five. Naaman was a warrior. Naaman was uh, a great man, but he was a leper. And some of the boys of Naaman they went to um, Israel and they went to invade Israel. And one way or the other, they took a little child captive and they brought him back home. And this little child was an Israelite, but was a captive. So he was waiting on Naaman's uh, wife. And he saw that Naaman was leprous. And he told the wife and he said, Ah, it would be good if my master can go to Israel. There is a prophet in Israel that can heal him of this leprosy. When he goes there, he will heal him. You know, the little child just said it. And Naaman went to Israel and met with Elisha. And Elisha just told him what to do. He did it and he became um, whole. His skin came out like the skin of a little child. And you know, he, at, from that moment, he began to trust. He began to believe in the God of Israel. So the imprisonment or the um, calamity or the, um, on, on, on the, the situation that is no good that had happened to that little child because it was taken from his own country. It was taken as a slave. That child would have said, if really there is a God in Israel, why would God allow me to go through this? Why would God allow these people to take me captive? But God is intentional. God intentionally allowed them to take her captive so that she can tell Naaman the way forward. God intentionally allowed her to be taken captive so that he can tell the wife what to do so that the husband can be made whole. God intentionally allowed that situation to happen so that Naaman can know that there is a higher God or there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. So God is intentional about you. God knows that whatever you are going through is not a mistake. God has a plan. He has a purpose. All you need to do is just submit your situation to God. Ask him, God, what do you want to achieve about this situation? God might be permitting that incident to happen to you because he wants to save his children. Remember the book of Esther. God had to remove Vashti because God knew that a day will come that somebody will want to wipe out all the old Jew in the land and god knows that queen vashti will not be useful for him at that time so he removed her ahead of time and he placed his own child esther there he knows that esther will be able to influence the situation when that time comes and esther did so god is intentional about everything whether god raises you up or god permits you to be pulled down god has a purpose for everything is intentional about your life his plan towards you is to prosper you whether you are weeping you are mourning whatever you are doing god has a purpose at which he has allowed you to go through it or is allowing you to go through it 
all you need to ask is that is that god why are you allowing me to go through this all you need to ask all you need to do is ask the father what point do you want to prove about the situation all you need to ask is that god what actually do you want to do is your country upside down does it look like the dark side is overcoming the light does it look like there is no hope around you does it look like it is bad news it is chaos it is dead sickness death sicknesses and diseases around you what does the situation look like don't worry god has a purpose god has a plan and his plans are always good all you need to do is go back to him and ask him go back to him submit the situation to him and ask that his will and his will alone will be done the way god has a plan also is the way the devil has planned god has a plan for you the devil has his own plan for you revelation chapter 12 verse 12 revelation chapter 12 verse 12 it says woe to the inhabitant of the earth and the sea for the devil has come down to you having great rod because he knows that he has a short time god has a plan the devil also has a plan if you are not in the family of god if you don't know jesus unfortunately god will be incapacitated about your situation if you don't know god god might not be able to help you some people say that what god cannot do does not exist god cannot save a man that has not willingly surrendered himself to him god cannot force himself on anybody god does not do that he's the most powerful god but he's meek he wants you to submit yourself he wants you to submit your heart he wants you to submit the rulership of your life to him so that his great plans can come to pass in your life he has great plans for you why don't you come to him why don't you come to jesus when you come to Jesus, then your tomorrow will be all right. When you come to Jesus, then his plan can come to pass over your life. When you come to Jesus, then you know that your future will be settled. When you come to Jesus, then you know that your tomorrow will be all right. Why don't you come to him? He has a purpose at which he has sent you to this world. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for your family. He has a purpose. There is a need in this world. Before he sent you, he saw that need. And he wanted you to solve that problem. He wanted you to fulfill that purpose. But you might not be able to fulfill this purpose if you don't come to the family of Jesus. Come to him. Because when you come to Jesus, then life will be easier. When you come to Jesus, then he will be able to solve all problems for you. When you come to Jesus then your future will be settled. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, I want to say thank you for your word that has gone forth. Thank you because you have enlightened the mind of the people. Thank you so much because you are a good God and you have a great plan for us. Father, be exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask, oh God, that the plan you have for my viewers, the plan you have for those people that are listening to me, Father, please let it come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you are the God that rules in the affairs of men. Because you are the God that raise up one and pull down the other. Lord, I ask, oh God, for as many that have submitted themselves unto you, for as many that are dedicated to your cause, Lord, I ask, oh God, that you answer that secret prayer, that hidden prayer, that thing that is causing their heart to bleed. Lord, I ask that you push through for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask, oh God, that you answer all their prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, oh God, you told Peter, you said the devil is willing to save you like we. He said, but I have prayed for you. Father, Lord, I pray that you pray for these people in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of it, Father, please take all the glory. Lord, I worship you. Father, I give you praise. Thank you because you have answered our prayers in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen thank you for watching i believe that god has blessed you and my prayer is that god will continually bless you in the mighty name of jesus till i see you again in my next video god bless you